A home for you and your family is the American dream, but what do you need to know about buying your dream home? With me is Brad Mallow. He's a real estate agent with Ruttenberg Realty. He's going to tell us all about it. Thanks for joining us, Brad. Of course. So what is the biggest mistake you see people make when they are figuring out if they can buy their dream home, particularly when it comes to this idea of stretching your budget a bit? Well, I think that's exactly the biggest mistake people make is they stretch too much. If we look at what happened a few years back before the housing market crashed, Mm -hmm. People were taking short-term mortgages, buying dream homes, and ending up in foreclosure and losing their shirts on the homes. Indeed. So how can you figure out if the home you're getting will make you cash poor? What do you break down in terms of the math? Well, there are mortgage qualifications, and, and that is generally a uh, debt-to-income ratio that doesn't exceed about the low 40s percentage. So you're going to look at your mortgage payments, your maintenance payments or HOA fees, uh, any debt that you have, make sure those numbers don't exceed about 43% of your income. And your debt does not include your lifestyle goals, how you live, what you want to save, those sorts of things. So how do you factor that in? Yeah, that is the trickiest thing. When you apply for a mortgage, the banks don't say, how much do you shop? How yeah. much how do you vacation? If you look at your whole income, look at what percentage you're putting towards retirement, what percentage you're paying taxes on, what percentage are your personal expenses, and see and make sure what's left over, you can actually afford to own and carry a home. Okay, speaking of affording to own, say you've factored in all of those things your lifestyle, your debt, you've qualified, uh, but maybe the affordability is kind of close with renting. Is there any time to go ahead and make the leap? If you're in within a low percentage point of the difference between renting and buying, I would say, provided you have the liquidity, you're going to build equity, you're going to be in it for the long term, hopefully, and reap more of a benefit than throwing money away renting. Okay, and, and a lot of younger folks do throw away money renting because it's a big leap to buy, but there may be this idea that you're going to be making more money down the line. Well, I would actually challenge that slightly. It's not, not guaranteed that you're going to be making more money down the road. I think you have to look at after a first purchase, things may change. Some people have kids. Some people then go to a one income earner goes part time. Or if you have a dual income in the home, someone may lose their job. You may have a divorce. You just never know what happens in life. You've got to plan for the worst. If you're self-employed, look at the lowest salary that you earn, the lowest income per year, and base your numbers off of that. Plan for the worst income, not the best potential income down the line. There's another mistake you say you see uh, 20s and 30s somethings make when they buy their first home. What is it? Um, I see the people pour money into uh, renovations is really what happens. What's wrong with that? Don't you want to increase the value of your home? You renovate? do. You certainly do, but you want to do it responsibly. Again, life changes. So when you pour all this money into a home that is not going to be your final end uh, dream home, you, you're essentially wasting money. You have to look at what homes around you are selling for, the renovated homes. If you want to make some improvements, I would do that on the conservative side. Don't pour everything in only to lose your shirt because you're spending more than what homes are actually worth. Uh -huh. So your starter home may not end up being your dream home. Don't invest in it as such. I take my parents as an example. Mm -hmm. uh, they've been in their home for over 30 years. I think when you can start seeing yourself settle down over a 15 to 20 year period, um, that's the time when you would make those choices to make that uh, the best home it could possibly be. Brad Mallow, thank you so much. And let us know what you think. We want to hear from you. Connect with us on Twitter, at Yahoo Finance, using the hashtag Destination Home. And for Yahoo Finance, I'm Lauren Lister.